Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the delightful light opera, Ermine, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Nell Tangeman. The railroad industry is particularly proud and happy to welcome this well-known concert and opera star, who incidentally is the daughter of a railroad locomotive engineer. Miss Tangeman is one charming reason why thousands of railroad folks and their families gathered at railroad safety rallies in many parts of the country will be listening with special interest to our program tonight. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Marvin Miller, and a good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, there's a fair going on in the little French village of Pomvere, and you're all invited. Around in the world we skip and we twirl, let each boy and girl make merry. Old men in a string, they scorn and first sling, young men in a ring make merry. Oh, wives in a row make learning for gold, but maidens by no make merry. You see that beautiful girl there? The one with the dancing eyes and the peaches and cream complexion? Well, that's Nell Tangerman in the role of the irresistible Ermine. And do you see that fellow there named Eugene who works for Ermine's father? Not a bad looking guy, is he? Well, that's me. Now, what would you do if you were Eugene and the night tasted like spring and the music was doing things to your feet and your throat? Would you grab Ermine and dance with her? Well, so will I. Let grieving go borrow is fair for tomorrow away with all sorrow make merry. From your path of a swing, let us join in a ring, let us dance, let us sing and make merry. Oh, that's wonderful, Eugene. But it's wrong for us to dance this way. Why is it wrong, Ermine? Because I am just your father's employee, his secretary? Oh, it's just that I'm afraid. Afraid? Of what, Ermine? Of, of falling in love with you. Oh, the only time to fall in love, Ermine, is when you're young. You hide it and save it and postpone it until you're old. <laughs> it runs away from you. Oh, I think you're right, Eugene. He goes his way. Tra la 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 la. His heart in the sunshine of life abides. No pang, not a thought of deceit. For youth's rosy tint, every blemish hides. And the dream of young love is sweet. Tra la 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 la. My father, how we feel right away. Yes, I shall say, my dear Marquis, 
I am in love with your daughter. No matter what anybody says, I intend to marry her. Oh, Eugene. <laughs> Emily? Where are you, Emily? It's my father. Tell him now. Oh, well, maybe I'd better rehearse a little longer. Ah, there you are, child. Oh, you here, Eugene? Yes, sir. What a surprise I have for you, my child. Surprise, Father? I have picked the day of the fair to introduce you to your future husband. Husband? Husband. I knew you would be pleased, Ermini. He is the son of my oldest friend. His name is the Vicomte de Brissac, and he should be arriving any moment. But, but, Father... You see how I am always thinking of your happiness, my child. For years, the Count and I have planned to unite our families. But, Father, did it ever occur to you that I might have an objection to such an engagement? Never. You're a soldier's daughter, and it's the duty of a soldier's daughter to obey. Am I not right, Eugene? Oh, well, sir, never having been the daughter of a soldier, I, uh... <laughs> well, I shall go prepare for his arrival. What a happy day! What a happy day! Oh, Eugene, why didn't you speak up? Why didn't you say something to Father? I didn't have the presumption to tell him that I loved you. You had the presumption to tell me. Oh, Ermini, I'm no good. I'm a coward, a weakling. I don't like to hear you talk like that. It doesn't compliment my taste in loving you. And you do love me. And, Ermini, though things don't look very bright for us, just remember the old saying, will you? Dark is the hour, a light of dawn dreamer. Deep as the gloom, ere the storm clouds divide. Be that my faith in the ad is there, seamer. Hope to be cherished, whatever may be tied. Vain, vain the dream, my loved one can ever. Mine be as vain, is the once plighted vow. No power can change the doom we must sever. Oh, could the Look blacker than now. Dark is the hour ere daylight beameth. Deepest the gloom ere the clouds divide. Be it my faith in that alone seemeth. Oh, Whatever may be tied, dark is the hour ere daylight beameth, deepest the gloom ere the clouds divide. Be it my faith in that. Eugene, I've never even seen the Vicomte de Brissac. What if he's an old man? What if he's fat and ugly? I hope he is. Then there won't be any chance of, of your falling in love with him. Halt! Stop! What? Get off your horse! Ah, see here, I'm the Vicomte de Brissac, and I won't be spoken to in that tone of voice, but... Oh, well, that... That pistol seems rather unnecessary. Uh, what was it you wanted me to do? Get off your horse and exchange clothes with me. Oh, yes, right away. Give me your clothes, your papers, your identification, and while you're at it, your money. You're the escaped convict, the notorious Raben. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. At any rate, I'm going to tie you to this tree so you won't spread a rumor like that. See here, I'm expected to pawn there. If I don't arrive, they'll come searching for me. I'm about to meet my... Well, my future wife. The daughter of the Marquis. <laughs> you don't seem particularly anxious. Well, I've never seen the wench. For that matter, none of them have ever seen me. And I'm just afraid she'll be old and fat and ugly. Aha. Uh -huh. ah, this is working out better than I thought. My dear Viscount, I shall appear in your place. For who would think of looking for an escaped convict at the chateau of a Marquis? <laughs> Eugene, 
What are all the soldiers doing here at the fair? They're searching for that escaped convict, that uh, revenge. Oh, dear. But my, how handsome the soldiers look. Well, if that's the way you feel, I believe I shall join the army if you marry that B-Count. Oh, the soldiers fly from the convict's morning at the The heroes made his aim in love and strike in love and war the victory. All for glory the soldiers' life. From the conflict scorning air to flee The hero's fame, his aim and strife In love, in war, the victor he All for glory the soldier's life From the conflict scorning air to flee The hero's fame, his aim in love and strife In love, in war, the victor he Oh, I love hearing you sing. You know, when your voice floats into my room, Ernie, with the night wind, then I, I know how much I love you. My friends, my dear friends. Oh, Father. I wish to present to you a young man who has just arrived in Pongve, the future husband of our beloved Ermini, the Vicomte de Brizac. Oh. Ladies, gentlemen. Oh, you Eugene. Ermini, I don't like that de Brizac. I don't know why, but I don't trust the way he looks. Come, my friends. This calls for a celebration. To the chateau. You are all invited. <laughs> Away from the throng Where the bridegroom and bride Will be flying to their long Where welcome shall meet them Where cheering shall greet them Where friends shall entreat them All blessings and song Away to the chateau Away from the throng Where the bridegroom and bride Will be flying to their long Where welcome shall meet them Where cheering shall greet them Where friends shall entreat them All blessings and song Where welcome shall meet them
We'll return for the second act of Ermine in just a moment. Can you imagine using a refrigerator big enough to hold 40,000 pounds of food? Well, you do use such a refrigerator. In fact, you use more than 130,000 of them. They are railroad refrigerator cars, and they are mighty important to you. For thanks to these railroad refrigerator cars traveling around the country all the time, you can enjoy fresh or frozen meats, vegetables, fruits, and dairy products every day of the year, no matter where you live. And that's just one example of the fact that almost everything you eat, wear, buy, or use moves by railroad. You have a very definite interest, then, in the efficiency with which the railroads serve you. That's why we think you'll be interested to know that in 1951, the railroads operated with the greatest overall efficiency on record. Last year, the average train carried more freight and carried it faster than ever before in history. The result, an all-time record in overall efficiency, shows again the inherent strength of the railroads, the only form of transportation big enough and strong enough to do the big job of transportation demanded by our civilian economy and national defense needs. But the railroads are not content to rest on this record, so they are keeping right on working, right up to the limit of available money and materials, to still further expand and improve their service, a service that is essential to the strength and health of our nation. Now here is Act Two of the light opera Ermine, starring Gordon MacRae as Eugene and Nell Tangeman as Ermine. Everybody is celebrating my engagement to the Vicomte, but I only feel like crying. What are we going to do, Ermine? Well, maybe if I go to the Vicomte, Eugene, and appeal to him, he'll release me. Oh, Ermine, it won't do any good. Your father would never approve of our being in love. If my mother were alive, she would help us. She would understand. You know, I remember your mother, Ermine. And I remember the way she used to sing. I dream about her so often. And I seem to hear her saying, everything will be all right. Was it when you were just a little child and afraid of the dark? Yes, I even hear the lullaby she used to sing to me.
dear lady, how beautifully you sing. Oh, Vicomte de Brissac. You know my father's secretary and aide, Eugene Marcel? Uh, charmed. Charmed. Tell me, Vicomte, how is your mother? Oh, wonderful. Fine. In the pink. Mm -hmm. According to the records, my dear Vicomte, your mother has been dead for six years. Uh -huh. Oh? Well, uh, what I mean is she's very well considering the fact. <laughs> <laughs> and your father? Very well the last time I saw him. Uh, you don't have any reports of his death, do you? No. Oh, well, then the old man is blooming. <laughs> mm-hmm. Excuse me. I have to talk to the Marquis. <laughs> Monsieur le Marquis, I hope you'll forgive me for questioning the integrity of one of your guests. Forgive you? I, I thank you, my boy. I, too, have been suspicious of the Vicomte. He's not at all the kind of person I wanted for Ermini's husband. Now, if you and Ermini had ever felt an attraction for each other... What did you say? Well, you're the kind of young man I'd like to see Ermini marry, Eugene. Monsieur le Marquis. But after all, you can't force these things. If people aren't attracted to each other, they just are. Monsieur le Marquis, I have a piece of news for you that'll make us both very happy. Ah, when love is young, all the world seems gay. Tra la 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 la. He sips it sweets as he goes his way. Tra la 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 la. Ah, when love is young, all the world seems gay. Tra la 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 la. He sips it sweets as he goes his way. Tra la 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 la. Germany. Oh, Ermini. Yes, Eugene? Your father approves of us. He, he doesn't even like the Vicomte. I shouldn't wonder, considering the fact that I've just arrived. Huh? Who are you? The real Vicomte. Your guest has been Raven, the notorious criminal. Why, I almost married him. Soldiers, have you captured your prisoner? Let me go. Let me go. I haven't done anything but impersonate a blasted nobleman. And escape from prison and rob me of my clothes? How did you get loose? I tied you to a tree. This young man had the good sense to call out the soldiers. I congratulate you, sir. I did it for Ermini. An honest crook can't even find protection in the chateau. Not very noble of the nobility. My dear Vicana, only one thing. You won't hold Ermini to this sight unseen engagement. No, my friend. For then I should be a thief like Raven. A love thief. For I see great love in your eyes for this young man, Mademoiselle Ermini. And it will be there always, Eugene. Always. Always, Ermini. Should we gain your favors, every heart is gay. Tra -la 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 -la. And all in choosing we shall go with. Tra -la 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 -la. Let grace not ire in your heart abide. Let your smiles all our efforts gain. In counsels mild, your decision guide. For the taste of success is sweet. Oh, deign pray to cheer each heart. Kindly and you depart. A weight of care is spread. A lane, a lane. Say with our efforts we gain here a victory. And a Charming guest, Nell Tangerman, will return in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to the other members of our cast, Herb Butterfield, Bill Conrad, Carlton Young, and to our entire company. Ermini with libretto by Harry Paulton and music by E. Yakubowski. 
was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. Marvin? The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Today, America's productive might is busy serving the needs of both commerce and national defense. Absolutely essential to such productive activity is a strong and efficient railroad system. Realizing that, America's railroads study and work continually to improve their efficiency. And now their efforts have paid off in a new all-time record for overall operating efficiency. That's good news for all of us. For it shows that the railroads are on the job and working steadily to do an even better job of filling the nation's transportation needs, both for commerce and national defense. Friends, the Red Cross has moved quickly to bring badly needed help to the thousands of victims of the Missouri and Mississippi River floods. And that's why the Red Cross now needs to raise a minimum of $10 million over and above what has been collected in their regular campaign. This money will be used for direct assistance in the form of food, clothing, shelter, and medical care for the victims of this terrible disaster. Each one of us is being asked to lend our financial support to the Red Cross in this hour of need by contributing to our local chapter. And now here again is our delightful guest star, Miss Snell Tangerman. Thank you, Gordon. It was a delight to sing this charming light opera with you. Well, the best part of this program, Nell, is that despite crooks, nobility, or plot complications, I usually manage to get the girl. <laughs> Speaking for the girls who are your guests, Gordon, um, we don't mind it a bit. What gal do you end up with next week? Well, lovely Nadine Connell, and we'll be singing the sprightly operetta Pink Lady. And in weeks to come, such delightful musicals as Jerome Kern's Sonny, Rogers and Hart's Spring is Here, Three Quarter Time by Johann Strauss in The Great Waltz, and Sigmund Romberg's unforgettable My Marilyn. Oh, that sounds like a wonderful spring season. We'll all be listening. Good. And good night, Nell. You were wonderful. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night, and Pink Lady, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Hermony was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can soon be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. Now, the voice of Firestone brings you Eugene Conley on NBC.